Uh, first of all, I would like to thank you uh, for the invitation to participate in this event. Um, events like this one, like Culture Action, Europe and Bosa are, are, are fundamental. Um, so I would like to make some observations about the importance of culture in European Union policy. In January 2014, the European Commission launched Creative Europe, a program that brings together the former culture program and media program with 1.46 billion budgets for 2014 and 2020 period, 9% higher than its predecessors, and which will support Europe's culture and creative sectors. It represents about 1% of the European Union budget. Yes, 1%. Only the European Union is re responsible for then 10 million jobs in 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 area uh, in culture area 30 million worldwide the potential of culture in terms of economic growth and job creation is indisputable this is a pr perspective on culture that cannot be neglected but this cannot be only the only aspect of culture to be taken into account it's a major bu budget it always is without questioning the right of each member state to decide its own priorities in cultural investment, we must think the role of the European Union in this area. Where we invest and which projects we should, should we support? What kind of culture we want for Europe and for its citizens? There was a time when culture meant a set of dis disciplines that, according to a less or more or less consensus, define an, an heritage of ideas, values, heart and knowledge. Culture should not be a permanent festival. While it may include it, the culture cannot be reduced to entertainment. At the risk of being accused uh, of being elitist, which is not at all true, I would say I don't like the lack of ambition of content contemporary culture. We have an obligation to do it better. And we should do these reflections. Today, in this new culture that we want the most comprehensive and accessible as possible, runs out in the fun and an entertainer, entertain of its, its consumers. It is a mass culture or a culture world, in the words of Lipovetsky, which includes everything, <coughs> sorry, and where everything is equivalent without any criterion to rank. Culture doesn't mean quantity or simply accessibility, but quality and sensitivity in the, in the aesthetic sense. A solid culture is what underlies the defense and promotion of human rights, gender equality, democracy, the rule of law, and of course, intercultural di dialogue. Promote mutual respect and dialogue is possible if you are, we, are, we, are, we are prepared to discuss and defend our points of view at the same time, we manage to understand the interests and specific cultural contexts of this other that stand before us. I understand culture as a confrontation of ideas, as creativity and possibility of change. Culture will only make sense if it is committed to its time, if it keeps us lucid and awake society from lethargy and indifference cultivated by this, this other spectacle culture, or else we risk to have a world without people, only with spectators. In fact, for me, culture means freedom. I must tell you I'm a professor of philosophy. Maybe you will find some philosophic elements in my point of view. Or at least the complaint for lack of it. And the political mission is a privileged space to ensure that freedom of being. Today we can say that the new policy requirement is not so much the question of equality, but the right to rec recognition, the right of being recognized. It makes all the difference. It's not enough to ask for equality. We want to be recognized. In general, the desire to be recognized is a requirement for minorities. In case of equality between men and women, it's absurd because women represent 54% of the European population. And our role is fundamental in a new Europe. <laughs> And when I say our role, I mean men and women. Our fight is not against men. It's against pre preconception and common sense. 
I was appointed uh, in November 2014 for the report Empowering Girls Through Education. This report, this report was approved as a resolution by a large majority of parla parliamentarians supporting the idea of education and curriculum as power instruments. I really believe that education plays a fundamental role in changing the state of affairs and it is responsible for the development of both personality and the creation of ideas which dictates attitudes, actions and perspectives on the world, guiding us through life and shaping our career choice. Women lead the number of students who completed in 2014 higher education in the European Union, with 58% against 42% of men. It was found that men were just ahead of 22% in engineering, manufacturing and construction, compared with 27% in women. In science, mathematics and computer science, we also have the majority, but there are other areas where women are in great numbers. The percentage of female graduates was particularly high in Estonia and Poland, with 66% uh, in both member states. The less variation between men and women was observed in Germany with 51% and Ireland with 52%. That's why my point of view, that's why we point of view out that while women represent the majority, 60% of higher education graduates in the European Union, their employment rate and promotion trajectories do not reflect their full potential. In case of culture, we need majors to encourage the specific promotion of women in the fields of culture and the production and dissemination of artistic and intellectual works. We want states, member states to ensure that the goals of the education system include, include education in respect for the fundamental rights and freedom, and in equal rights and opportunities for women and men. And their system's quality principles include the elimination of the obstacles to genuine equality between women and men, and the promotion of full equality between them. I will, I will uh, cut a little bit. Um, we have some dangerous data. Uh, I am the Vice President of Mediterranean in the European Parliament. And you can imagine how it's difficult now to work uh, with some countries. Uh, I'm thinking, for example, the case of Syria, the case of Iraq. It's very difficult. For example, in the first meeting we have in Barcelona, um, the Prime Minister of, of Argelia didn't want uh, to check my hand because I'm a woman. Only because of it. So you can see what, what the representations of people minds, especially in some politicians. The most dangerous data that we have now, it's for example, did you know that 30, 30 million, it's the number of women who have suffered from domestic violence over 12 months? That 3 point million is the number of women who have suffered from sexual violence over 12 months? That one in 20, in, in, in 20 women have been raped since the age of 15, that about 18% of women in the European Union uh, were victims of persecution after 15 years old. Did you know that half of all women in the European Union, 53%, avoid certain situations or places for fear of being attacked physically or sexually? Or that 30% of women who experience sexual victimization by a former partner or by a current partner was also victim, victims of sexual violence in childhood. Did you know that one in three women, it means 33% 30, uh, of 62 million women in Europe, in all 28 European members countries, have suffered some form of physical and sexual violence uh, since the age of uh, 15, the case of rape, mutilation, harassment, beating, or death. That 500,000 women and girls in the European Union have been subject to female, gen uh, female genital mutilation. And 118,000 are at risk of the same abuse every year, every year, in countries, especially in countries like United Kingdom, Italy, Germany, Netherlands, Sweden, and Belgium. We know all this, and while we are here, some, some women are raped and killed. And you know why? 
because they burn women. And their body is used as a weapon of war. See the case of Syria, see the case of Congo, see the case of Rwanda. They kill women's body, they destroy their souls. In fact, what I want, what I really want is to be able to be a woman without, uh, without this, this being a defect, a symptom of weakness or a bad luck of nature. Let me be who I am without fear of being born a woman. Thank you. Now we have maybe five minutes um, to talk a little bit uh, about your speech, which I found extremely interesting. And especially I appreciated that you gave data of how women are uh, violated uh, in Europe, because we have this feeling sometimes, um, a lot of people around me have the feeling that women in Europe are, you know, perfectly well, <laughs> and we don't have any problems. And the fact that 33% of us, at least, um, have suffered sexual violence or, or physical violence, um, well, it's, it's scary, and, and it does uh, match the data that I have from people around me. And so it's very good that we remember that Europe is not this perfect spot. And also I found very interesting um, the data about graduation. So countries who, who seem to have um, better equality policies have more men who graduate. So come on, guys, I mean, <laughs> wake up. It's good for you too. Um, so I think it's, uh, it's good that we keep all these things in mind. Um, I wanted to ask you specifically, um, you know, taking advantage of the fact that you are here and you work as a politician and it's not something all that common. Um, how do you feel that the fact that you are a woman and that you suffer um, the discrimination of being born a woman with women's fears imposed of us since we are born, um, how do you feel this makes you a better politician or, or someone who can look at things from a different way? Uh, in fact, I, I, never, I never suffered uh, any kind of discrimination. Um, that, that, let me explain to you, uh, because I don't allow it. It's very simple. Um, when I say I don't allow it, I, I, if somebody treats me uh, in the wrong way, I, I, I make sure that people will understand my point of view. Uh, I have born in a family of feminists. My father is a feminist, my mother is a feminist, my husband is a feminist. So I feel very comfortable uh, at my family and in my land. I'm from Madeira. In, in Portugal, we have very good laws uh, to protect women. We are one of the best in the European Union. Uh, but for example, when I arrived at the European Parliament in the first week, it was interesting because somebody calls to my office and say, I want to speak with uh, the Deputy Rodriguez. And I, I say, it's me. No, no, the Deputy Rodriguez is supposed to be a man. It's interesting to see that kind of things. And sometimes they confuse me with, with assistance, that kind, that kind of, of uh, attitudes that don't stay very good even in, in, in between the politicians. But in European Parliament, especially European Parliament, and also Commission, I must, I must say to you, we are making a good job uh, in the case of women's rights, but not only women's rights. Uh, the Commission of FEM, treats uh, uh, not only case of equality between men and women, but also other kinds of genders. Um, especially the, the community of LGBT. We are working on it. Uh, we'll have a very, a very big conference uh, next month about it. Um, but of course, you, you, we must do something when we feel discriminated. When I say I don't feel discriminated, it's because I give the answer if they did written bad. And we should f be the first to denounce that kind of all things. If I may, I'm going to um, challenge um, this affirmation um, of allowing or not allowing discrimination because I think if, if we get into this kind of discourse, I'm not discriminated because I don't allow it, it's, it's okay. <laughs> okay, I was a bit scared because um, this puts all the um, you know, responsibility in, in women who maybe cannot act because they when are I say not lucky enough. You should answer, you should yeah. give an answer. Mm -hmm. As, as, far, as far as we feel safe and in a, in a safe uh, environment, which is not always the case, yeah, we should answer. And, and we should encourage and we should help. But um, for example, it, it shocked me when you said that um, 
So when you said that there was this president from Artelia who wouldn't shake your hand, so I would see that as a discrimination. So it's it's something what you make of that if you let it like bother you or if you just say okay this is your problem and not mine. This is something else. But how you face the discrimination is something else. But that you do suffer discrimination. Everybody, every woman uh, suffers discrimination on a daily day base. It's uh, it's very clear just walking out the street and, and you said yourself how we do not take certain roads at certain times um, because we are scared, no? So I think this is a discrimination that nobody is um, vulnerable to. So I, I just wanted to challenge the discrimination part. <laughs> and maybe um, you have um, Bridget or Xenia or you have something else that you would like to comment, Matthias? Or Mm -hmm. okay. Maybe just that I'm not representing uh, the global really men in the entire. Put <laughs> 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 that notion of uh, one man's view, but I have to share that. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. Um, but you're not one of those not all men guys, are you? No. Okay, thank you. <laughs> you make me happy. Um, maybe. Uh, the data is very important because I come from a country that kind of discards data and so I mean it's striking sometimes to hear this but at the same time formalities aside I have to say that I, I was also raised by a feminist woman back in the 70s so I was um, led to believe like ever, anything is possible and I have this bravado and audacity that sometimes gets misunderstood as a kind of a masculinity or some sort of a, some sort of a bossiness um, I would argue that um, I think women are overqualified, like most of my generation in the sense that we have at least two postgraduate diplomas and some of us are struggling or have already obtained PhDs in some obscure categories or another. So the problem is not the education um, as a degree, the problem is the education as a system. So if we say that there is a system and there is the family and the other one is the school and we go on and we go on, um, then we need to reform things from a very early stage, meaning like when people are three or four, if we're not too late that yet. That was the one aspect, and maybe what I would also like to ask you is that um, whether you feel, all of you, that uh, women are undermining the position of other women when we're in positions of power, which is something that I have encountered in se se similar several cases, and for me it was mostly like an eye-opener, but at the same time, we sometimes, in order to protect our vulnerability, we adapt or re, um, we, we over-identify, uh, in a sense, and we perform attitudes that are not necessarily um, true to, you know, what we would have liked to become, but they actually allow us to go by and retain the positions of seniority or um, create some sort of um, hierarchy within an unruly scenario. Um, from my point of view, I'm using one of those language modulators that I'm trying to get rid of, but it's very, very difficult uh, when you have used them all your life. But from my point of view, um, since access to power uh, is associated with certain performance of masculinity, it doesn't matter that you're a woman, you need to perform that masculinity. Um, and I remember reading somewhere that Margaret Thatcher had class uh, lessons. She took lessons to speak with a... Uh, voice, a deeper voice, and, and to get rid of those um, um, modulators and, and to talk in a more assertive way so that she would uh, sound more masculine and, and guys would feel more comfortable voting for her. So that she basically was a man with a skirt um, from the, you know, the way she performed um, all, this, <laughs> uh, all those um, views of masculinity. Um, but also, I think... Um, one and a half year ago, I was elected president of the Writers' Association, which is also one of those places that it's, it means nothing, so it's okay that a woman does it. Um, and we have been working, um, lately there have been a lot of women uh, being presidents of staff that has to do with literature, where I come from in Catalonia. So in most meetings, it's just women making the decisions, and we have found that it's very easy to collaborate with each other. So maybe because we are not competing with each other for anything, but we are, you know, building something, and um, we don't feel threatened. Maybe it's easier to to bring um, 
this more practical, we have very short meetings and <laughs> very productive meetings, and then we go pick our kids up from school, and we are all happy. So that's when when I when I was joking about just taking over and getting rid of men until we can raise them properly, as we are raising girls properly, not to kill anybody and you know to rape anybody and you know just be polite and listen. Um, until we finally find how to raise boys to be like that, just, you know, we take over, we don't let any men in power, and that's it. Um, so this is a very crazy idea that would be wonderful, from my point of view, again, um, for a few years at least. Um, but maybe if more women were in power, uh, we could get rid of this performance of masculinity. Um, I don't know how you see that from, you know, because I'm, I'm very far from power, so I have no idea how it really works. <laughs> it's just an idea that I have. Something is very true. Uh, the criteria of success they are from men who give uh, includes to the women. And you have another problem that usually um, in enterprises, but not only enterprise, men nominate men. And when you have women in power, they nominate men. It's a fact. We have that as about it. No, it, it's a fact. And you, and I'm talking about European Union, okay? Um, and and the, the access of power usually depend of it to women. Um, for example, in case, uh, I will give you the example of the list of deputies from, from Socialist Party in Portugal. They decide to be a, a list of, uh, a parity list. A man, a woman, a man, a woman. And when I see the, the list, I ask, but why is not a woman the first one? Why it's a man? People were very happy, it was the only list in the European Union that has parity. But in fact, the first one was a man. It was not a woman. And they didn't give me the answer. So I, did, I really defend. Uh, I will give the example of Portugal because, not because I'm Portuguese, but, but because we have a very good examples there. Um, we have a, a quota system. Uh, each three um, candidates, one must be a woman. Can be the first one, the second one, the third one. It, it's not. A, a, it's a transitory law, but it, it uh, obliges people to to give. Uh, uh, a place to, to the woman. For example, you have another country, you don't have anything of it. Um, so in, in our report, uh, we, we, we recommended that that all members of the European Union has a, a system quota, a quota system. But it, it, will, it will not be uh, published, but it will be uh, a law published, but it will be transitory for six years or seven years. In case of Portugal, it was for 10 years. And we hope that one day we don't need any more uh, the quota laws. It will end this year. And for example, our government uh, decide that uh, the, the next list, all of them, even for the local power, will be with parity. I just expect that some lists have men uh, in second place. Uh, but in fact, I really believe that uh, the problem of discrimination, and I really hope that it was clear for you, that when I said that we should not allow discrimination, uh, I mean, you should help when people are discriminated. For example, in India, they are doing a very good job. It's a very difficult country, as you know, for women to be, uh, to be a woman. But they are doing a very, very good job. Because not only women who are victims, men are too. Because this is a problem of education. Uh, you say, and well, that uh, we all have access to, 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 to secondary school, higher education. But for example, if you look for um, the decision makers of students, for example, uh, students' unions, usually you don't have girls in power. And for example, in our report, uh, we recommended that girls should be in power. So that all depends, uh, in my point of view, the first step is education. For you to have an idea, uh, not only in Portugal, but also in other countries, um, they have, in our case, it's very clear. We decide to do gender education since um, before primary school, since the kindergarten, and we are, we don't allow at this moment in the kindergarten uh, the pinky room, the blue the room. We don't allow anything of it. It's not allowed in Portugal. So, um, in case of European Union, as I told you, we are doing uh, a very very big investment in in uh, question of gender equality. Uh, for example, what we want is that all member states sign the Istanbul Convention. It will be very important. And only this year, 
Commission decides to sign the Istanbul Convention only this year. So the access to power will, will, will depend, of course, from politicians, but of course from the first and most important institution that it is school. Cool.